Today, I'm excited to be talking about Plasma 6.3, the KDE desktop. This is a fantastic desktop environment. I'm currently using it on my Arch Linux system. I don't have it currently updated because the repositories are a little behind, but I do have it installed here with KDE Neon. And my plan is to go through some of the new updates and look around at some of the great tools that this new KDE Plasma 6.3 edition gives us. So anyways, I'm gonna start the system upgrade. That way, while we're talking about things, I get the latest and greatest, as this is the 6.3 beta, and I've had just a few issues recently while testing things out. Regardless, Plasma 6.3 is set to release February 11th, 2025. Stated one year on with the teething problems of a new major release inevitably brings firmly behind us, Plasma developers have worked on fine tuning and squashing bugs and adding new features to Plasma 6, turning it into the best desktop environment for everyone Read on to discover all the exciting new changes landing in this release. And one of the main highlights that I'm extremely excited about is the drawing tablet overhaul. So digital art has received an upgrade in Plasma. And this makes me excited because I use a Wacom drawing tablet myself to do a lot of annotations. And there just isn't a great drawing tablet configuration on just about any desktop environment today. So I'm definitely excited to see how they've overhauled the drawing tablet application. Let's see what's mentioned before we go into the actual desktop environment. We want to make Plasma the best platform for creativity and Plasma 6.3 takes the next step in that direction by providing features that help artists optimize and customize their graphics tablets to their liking. The system settings drawing tablet page has been overhauled and split into multiple tabs to improve how things are organized and new configuration options have just been added to each section. I'm gonna preview of what things look like down here. Now you can map the area of the drawing tablet surface to the entire screen area. We have refined the tablet calibration feature so that it produces more accurate calibrations. The stylus testing feature shows information about tilt and pressure. You can now customize the pressure curve and the range of a stylus to chop off the high and low parts. You can also remap or swap the functions of the stylus buttons. And here we get a preview of what the drawing tablet and system settings configuration looks like. And right here, they're actually using an Intuos pen and touch small. I actually have a medium, which is exciting. And it's mapping to an E display port screen. And they say map to a certain portion and they get to select the portion of the screen that they want. You can tell here they're mapping about 80% of the entire real estate of the tablet to 100% of the screen, as far as I can tell here. Meaning this small area on the tablet itself is what gets used up on the screen. Anyways, this is all fantastic. And what's also fantastic is I've just updated things out here to 6.3, and now I should be able to test this out. So I updated things through KDE Neon, their Discover app, making it pretty easy. I'm waiting for this version to be released in the Arch Linux repositories. Anyways, I need to get into settings real quick. But before I do, I'm gonna go into display configuration and talk about some of the scaling here. So we're actually gonna increase the scaling so we can see things a little better. Let's see if that's good. Yes, that looks good. Let's exit out of here. We'll go back and just launch settings real quick and go down to the drawing tablet. No drawing tablets found. Okay, let me see if I can connect my current tablet to see if it'll work. All right, in the settings under drawing tablet, I currently don't have the proper drivers, but it is detecting a tablet, which is very exciting. I wanna try it out, but here's the app. And I can, and for example, if I change it to all screens, anyways, to map, then I have the option to select what I want the mapped area to look like, AKA keep aspect, ratio and fit, map to portion, stretch and fill. Stretch and fill is what I'm gonna use. And let's see what happens if I try to use the tablet. Look at that, it's actually being used in the background. This right now is being controlled by my drawing tablet. So I'm selecting pen here, and I can decide on the pen pressure right now. It's a linear scale from zero to 100% as far as pressure goes. And I can select ranges, even define per application, enable the left-handed mode, and then in pad, I can select the default pad options for each button that I have on the pad. I do have some buttons, I don't necessarily use them, but here's what I really wanna do is test the tablet. Now, if I go over here, I can look at what these values are, aka X and Y give me where it's located, P gives me the pressure that I'm doing, and TX, TY give me the tilt. So let's see if it's actually detecting this properly. So I am just writing here, so this is KDE Plasma. How awesome, it's working great. Now, if I look at the tilt, it's about 30 degrees. Actually, I agree with that. And the Y, it's around 20. 
and the pressure is around 23%. Now, let me really press down. Okay, here we go. Yep, I saw 70% being scrolled across earlier. So this is all working great. I'm finally excited to see a good application being created for drawing tablets. This is fantastic. Not only do we get to debug things, but it has been tremendously improved. And I can now say that I can use my Wacom into a medium tablet because it's one of the things I've been asked quite a bit is when I write on the screen, what am I using? Well, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. But now I can officially say that KDE Plasma is by far the best setup that I've used. Anyways, with that applied, I'm going to get into more things. But before I do, if you're excited for KDE Plasma, make sure to smash that like button for me and think about subscribing below because YouTube gets finicky. You wouldn't want to miss another video. Let's get into some of the other features available with KDE Plasma 6.3. That's definitely the one I'm most excited about. And the most important news over here is how fractional scaling works in Plasma 6.3 KWIN makes a stronger effort to snap things to the screen pixel grid, greatly reducing blurriness and visual gaps everywhere, producing sharper and crisper images. For all of you who are using fractional scaling, you'll rejoice because you're gonna get sharper and crisper desktop elements as a significant improvement will help with the rendering of UI elements and getting rid of blurriness or inconsistency. This works at a very high zoom level as well, as KWIN's zoom effect switches to a sharp, pixel-perfect representation and overlays a grid on top of the screen. You can actually see how individual pixels look relative to other ones. Very useful for artists and designers. Another mention about designers and artists, I love the fact that they're focused on the creative community here. As more and more of us are creating nowadays, it is really cool to see at what level KD Plasma is getting to, and I'm loving what they're doing here. Let's go check out the zoom. Here is where you can set some of the settings for the KWIN zoom feature. We have zoom factor 1.2, and we have show pixels grid at zoom level 15. You can actually adjust this. So once we get to 15, we can start seeing the grid. Mouse pointer is scaling, mouse tracking is proportional. And in order to zoom in, we have to do super plus plus here on I am just zooming in. Let's see if we can get to that 15 level. Here it is right here. Somewhere in between here, we can actually see where we're at. And if I'm using the zoom back out feature, we can see it works pretty well. So again, if you zoom in and then use the mouse, you can actually look through and see everything in a zoomed effect. It's fantastic how well this is working. It's really doing well with the rendering here. I can definitely tell that it's not missing much. Now my screen isn't the greatest, so by default that's actually creating the issue here with the sharpness. I only have a 1920 by 1080 screen and that causes us to lose a little bit of the sharpness here. It's not a fancy screen at all, but overall I do love the fact that you can get through here and it's just see these individual pixels. It's a little mind numbing. You could try to even use it like this, but uh, anyways, great for colored artists as you can even see the gradients that come across. Wonderful stuff. Seamless use, exactly what I expect of KD Plasma. Let's continue on to more exciting updates. A small but still nice detail is that widgets placed on the desktop are very slightly translucent, just like the pop-up windows placed on the panel. Great. Hardware monitoring. System monitor monitors CPU usage more accurately and consumes vastly fewer CPU resources while doing it. This is exciting and optimization for the system monitor. If you're using Plasma 6.3 on free BSD, you're in luck. The system monitor app and widgets now collect GPU statistics on your system too. So whoever is using it on free BSD, get excited because now you can see your GPU statistics as well. Info Center also provides more information exposing data of all your GPUs as well as your battery cycle counts. Monitoring printers is equally as easy as printers print queue is shown directly in the widget. Plasma already includes a variety of background services that lets you know when something is wrong and what to do about it. New in Plasma 6.3 is a service that detects when the kernel terminated an app because the system ran out of memory. So you're going to see a notification and what happened. Great tool. I know while I'm developing this happens quite infrequently, but frequently enough to not understand what in the world just happened, aka a background process was running and filling memory, and I had no idea what happened. Instead, I go chasing something else, debugging something else. Tools have been updated, including KRunner, Discover, and the Weather Widget. Usability with configuration, such as the built-in touchpad to switch off automatically so it doesn't interfere with your typing. Finding things is easier with the help category being added to the launcher. And they've also made things clearer by using the show target item to the desktop context menu for symbolic links. 
The digital clock widget displays all events and days with more than five of them giving you a complete view of upcoming commitments. And when you want to reboot into the bootloader menu, the next time your machine reboots, the logout screen now indicates this. So you can see an app here and they can hit show target. Now, one of the biggest things here is customization. Finally, what would Plasma be without customization? To begin with, panels can be cloned. You can now use scripting to change your panels, opacity levels, and what screen they appear on. That's really cool. Let's go try that out. Okay, so let's say I have some things loaded up. So now if you want to clone the panels, so we can go down and hit show panel configuration, and then simply click clone panel and select which way we want to clone to. So I'm just going to select right and left. And now you'll notice that I have the panels cloned to either side. It's kind of cool. You can now easily clone your panels across the screen without losing a bunch of customization. Cool new feature. Now I got three different places I can launch or use my panel from. Anyways, another cool and exciting feature for us KDE Plasma users. All these updates really go and prove just how awesome and unmatched KDE is when it comes to customization, as well as shows how it's best in class using fractional scaling. And we know it has great high DPI support. I love the modern adaptive UI. KDE has really been powerful when it comes to the desktop space in the last few years and continues to surprise everyone with all the new modern feature packed yet lightweight tools that they keep creating for us. I'm super excited to see this beautiful and polished UI. As we can currently tell on this KDE Plasma version 6.3, we have around 1.6 out of 7.7 .7 gigabytes being used, which overall is absolutely fantastic for such a wonderfully modern UI. Again, loving that update to the configuration of tablets. That's probably the one I'm most excited about. Let me know what you're excited about in the comment section below. Have you used KDE Plasma? What desktop are you using currently? Also, don't forget to smash that like button if you haven't already. You've made it to the end of the video. You're clearly liking things here and don't forget to subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another one. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.